Aê! Acho que tá tudo funcionando agora. Estamos ao vivo aqui no Facebook. Oh, I, I forgot. Today, today's class is going to be only in English. Are you guys excited? Bora lá. Então, ó, hoje a aula vai ser somente em inglês. Eu tô com vocês aqui do ladinho é, para ver se vai ter algum comentário. Então, sempre deem os comentários aqui de vocês. Um... E deem o seu boa noite, o seu good evening aqui para mim. Daqui a pouquinho eu já passo para o inglês 100%. Então, para quem está assistindo aí, boa noite, good evening. Vocês estão animados que hoje é inglês? Only today in English. All the slides, all the material, all I'm gonna speak will be in English. So, um, I'm very excited for this live and it's an opportunity for me to, to um, practice my English with you guys. It's kind of hard, right? Um, when we, here we go, we have all the comments down here. Um, let me tell the people from Instagram. Let me tell people. Okay, now I can see all of your comments. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, for those who want to have the material, the PDF, the file I prepared for today's lesson, leave in the comment down below, okay? And I'm going to send you on Telegram channel. So I'm very excited for today's class. I'm sure you guys are excited too because when you learn in English, it's a way for, of you, for you to practice. Not only um, you're listening, but also you can um, actively learn English. Some people like to learn English in English, some people like to, lear to learn English in Portuguese, and I think both are important depending on your level. So for those who are watching me on Instagram live today, the lesson today will be on YouTube, and I encourage you to go there um, to watch the lesson, okay? Um, for those who don't know, my YouTube channel I'm going to link here in the comments. I'm sure you won't want to miss it. Okay, I'm so excited. I'm going to have my water here. So everything is good. The quality is all good. So guys, today is a great opportunity for you to interact with me, make your questions and um, learn how to ask or even how to respond, how to say what you like doing, your favorite things in life. Okay, so let's go to our PDF file. So today's lesson is called, What Do You Like Doing? And um, we are going to learn some new vocabulary. So as I start, well, what would I like you to do? I'm kind of nervous, I think, because I took some medicine, I don't know. But what I want you to do, So in the comments, I want you to introduce yourself only in English. And while you're doing it, so so as you write, say what you're typing out loud. So for example, if I'm typing uh, my introduction, I'm going to say, Hi, I'm Drielli. I'm 31 years old. I live in Texas with my husband and I teach English as a second language um, as my profession. So in the comments down below, say in English, type in English your introduction. Tell me who you are, where you live, how old you are. And that way it's a practice. So when you meet someone new and you already know how to introduce yourself, which is a really good point and it's a really good way to start a conversation. So when you meet someone new, you meet a stranger on the, on the street or On a class, the first thing you say, the first thing you do is to introduce yourself and ask about the other person's um, name and information. So let's get to know each other a little bit here more. And for that, type it, type your, your introduction. Introduction. It's kind of hard because I was speaking Portuguese a little bit before this class, so... Also, don't forget to like this live. I'm gonna give you a, some some time to to answer. It's Fernanda's first time here, so I'm so happy to have you here, Fernanda. Hi, Andresa. 
Are you guys typing your introduction? Introduce yourself. That's easy. So moving on um, here. So I want you to write down also in one comment, try to do everything in one comment, the names of countries around or near Brazil. And also I want you to think what language these countries speak. All in English, right? So I want you to write it down all the countries' names you know that are near Brazil and the languages they speak. So I know um, what you know as far as countries' vocabulary. Also, I'm going to teach you some new vocabulary today, so I strongly encourage you to repeat after me. So, Messia, Messia, go to YouTube. I think it will be better for you because you can see the slides. So my YouTube channel is Reality Patsnik. So he said, what's up, teacher? Great. Um, I'm Messias from Brazil. I'm 14 years old. I study by myself and I speak every time in language English. So I wouldn't say like that. I would say I study um, by myself and I speak um, and I speak whenever I can English or or I practice my English whenever I can. So I don't know if you guys are good with geography. My geography is not that great. I know a few countries that are near Brazil, but I don't know all of them. And I'm sure there are a bunch of them because there are those small countries, right? So Andresa Gomes said, hi, I'm Andresa. I'm 35 years old. I live in Paulinha and I'm human resources cons consult. So I would say in this case, Andresa, um, I, am, I am a... So don't forget the article A. So I am a human resources consultant. So consult is the verb and the noun, the profession's name would be consultant. Okay, so I would say I am a human resources consultant. Great. Who else is going to introduce themselves here? Also write it down the names of the countries you know so we can practice our speaking and also our pronunciation. And I strongly encourage you to repeat after me to practice your pronunciation as well. Thanks, teacher. I will practice. Great mindset and great attitude, Messias. So I don't know um, if I'm giving you enough time. So if you need more time to answer my questions, just let me know in the comments down below. But it's really important for you to do these exercises because it will help you to memorize and to remember after class. So the exercises are a great way for you to memorize the information you are being taught. I think this is the first time I'm doing a live only in English, like teaching English only in English. So enjoy because this doesn't happen very often. It's actually a struggle and it's challenging because you feel judged by the other people, right? That are watching you, but who cares? We all make mistakes. I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm sure here. We're all learning, but I know more than some of you. So that's why you teach English. I'm going to think put some like music on while you guys think about it. What do you think? Mm. As I wait for you guys to answer as I wait for you to answer, I'm going to leave the song, the music playing. Exactly, Andresa, congratulations. That's exactly right.
Okay, so write it down. The names of countries around or near Brazil and the language the these countries speak. Eu vou ficar só no YouTube, tá bom? Então meu canal é Drielle Petsnake Só clica lá que a aula está por lá Beleza? Bye Ok, so let's see what countries are around um, Brazil. So here we have Brazil's map and then we have Venezuela, so Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, so Peru is Peru, Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, and then Brazil, Brazil. Here we have Guiana and then here we have two other um, countries that I can't read and because my geography is terrible, I don't know the country's name. But if you do know, leave in the comments down below. Um, Fernanda says, hi, I'm Fernanda, I'm 26 years old and I live in Santa Catarina. I am a student, okay? So guys, every time you're talking about your profession, don't forget the article A. So I am a English teacher, you are a student. And the and the languages these countries speak. So we have Portuguese, so repeat after me, Portuguese, Spanish, Spanish, French, French, English, English, German, German, Italian, Italian. So there are German speakers in Brazil because you know, we have a huge community of German South in South Brazil. We also have English speakers in Brazil, French because of Guiana. So Guiana speaks French and then Italian. I think it's Argentina and some countries, some countries around um, Brazil. OK, we have way more other languages that are spoken in Brazil and some other countries like Japanese, Mandarin, I saw. Um, but these are the main ones. So Portuguese, Spanish, French, English, German, and Italian. Okay? And I want to ask you, what languages do you speak? I'm not asking you what languages you speak fluently, but rather what language do you speak? So I, Drielli, I speak Portuguese, I speak English, and I am currently learning Japanese. So what languages do you speak? And then I'm gonna put the music on again. So what languages do you speak? You can answer, I speak Portuguese and English. I speak Mandarin. So give me the full phrase.
Andresa, Andresa is bio, is is pol, she's a polyglot. She speak por, she speaks Portuguese, English and Spanish. Wow. Andresa is a polyglot. So someone who speaks two languages, it's called bilingual. Someone who teaches no, who who knows, right? Someone who knows two languages is bilingual. Someone who knows more than two languages is called a polyglot. Fernanda, I'm so Fernanda, you have to say I speak because if you say I am speak, it's incorrect. Right, so you say I speak Portuguese and I am learning English. So the way you would say is that I speak Portuguese and I am learning English. That's why I like this interaction because I can help you with your mistakes, correcting your mistakes. And I am really proud of you, Fernanda, for learning English. It's a great language to learn. Okie dokie, so let's go ahead. So when you ask someone like, what do you like to do? You have two ways, right? You can say, what do you like doing? Or what do you don't or what you do? What do you dislike doing? And here, I was just so confused that I got a little bit of what do you actually here, here. Yeah, here we go. Now it's correct. <laughs> I was kind of, I was kind of puzzled. I didn't know. I was like, what did I do there? So you can ask what someone likes to do and what someone doesn't like to do. And this doesn't like to do, you can say it dislike. And there are some different words and verbs that you can use to express how much you like something, the level of likelihood. So you can use like, which is way, it's more common. It's the most common word to ask um, the likelihood. You can also use enjoy. And there is a difference between like and enjoy. Some people ask me, but let's think about that. When you like something, it's very simple, generic. You like. When you enjoy, you really like feel it, you appreciate, it's just like you enjoy someone's company or what this person is doing for you. Or you enjoy the moment. You don't only like it, you enjoy, you participate, the feeling is stronger. So when you like something, it's okay, but when you enjoy something, it means that um, it's more than just liking. And it's different from loving. When you enjoy, it's somehow you participate. You put yourself in the activity, in the moment, okay? You can also say that you are a fan. And then fan has several meanings. Two meanings, fan, fan or ventilador. So I can say I am a huge fan of Taylor Swift. I'm crazy about, so I'm crazy about chocolate. Quite like would be the so-so. Some people use so-so to express mais ou menos. And I don't like that expression at all. And it's not wrong. It's just not used anymore. So-so, it's in old English. So it's old English. Nobody speaks that way anymore. So instead of saying, oh, so-so, you can say quite or kinda. Those are the, the two most common ways of saying so-so. So, oh, I quite like chocolate or I kind of like chocolate. And then you can go above and beyond. You can say, I love or I adore. So repeat after me because the pronunciation is very important. Some people pronunciate wrongly like key, enjoy, and that's not how you pronunciate those words. So repeat after me. Repeat out loud. Like, enjoy a fan, crazy about, quite like, kinda like, love, adore. And then we have some different words for when you don't like something, such as dislike, dislike. I dislike chocolate, which is not possibly true. So dislike, I dislike chocolate. Don't like, don't like. This is the most common way of saying that you don't like something. 
So most people use that, but there are several other, several other ways of saying it. And I suggest that if you are using don't like too much, for you to choose another word, a synonym. You can also say not a fan. I'm not a fan of chocolate. I'm not crazy about chocolate. I hate chocolate. I loathe chocolate. I quite dislike chocolate. So don't like is the same as dislike and is the same as not a fan or not a crazy about. When you hate or loathe, it's more than not liking it. It's a stronger feeling of disliking something. So, for example, some people hate Bolsonaro, right? So, they can say, I loathe Bolsonaro. Some people loathe injustice. So, I can say, I loathe injustice. Now, we can say, oh, I, oh, I, quite, li I quite dislike broccoli. I quite dislike broccoli. So, repeat after me. Dislike, don't like, not a fan, not crazy about, hates, loathes, quite dislike. Also, if I'm speaking way too fast, you can tell me in the comments to slow down. Here, I'm, I brought you some phrase examples, right? So let's read through them. I enjoy traveling. I enjoy traveling. I like traveling by plane. I like traveling by plane. I love Argentina. Argentinians are very friendly. So people that are from Argentina are called Argentinians. And to be friendly is to be kind. Amanda adores watching the Brazilian team soccer games. What a long sentence here, huh? So, Amanda adores watching the Brazilian team soccer games. Also, let's not forget when you're talking about something in the present. He, she, it deserves, needs, requires an S by the end of the verb. They are huge fans of German songs. They are huge fans of German songs. And then here we have the dislike section. So Joshua hates traveling. Maria's mom dislikes packing. And then here we have the apostrophe S indicating possession. So in English, we often use the apostrophe S indicating possession. So, sometimes you get this confused because it's not how you normally speak in Portuguese. I don't think we ever speak like that in Portuguese. So, if you translate from Portuguese to English straightforward, you would say, you know, um, the mom of Maria, the mom of Maria. And that's not how you usually say. So, Maria's mom is the most common way. Maria's mom dislikes, and then here we have an S because we are talking about the simple present. And then packing. What, what does it mean, packing? So imagine that you're going to Paris and you have to put all of your clothes and all of your belongings in a suitcase. This action of putting all your belongings, everything you will need in that travel, it's called packing. Packing. Her daughter is not a huge fan of the Cuban president. Okay. Adam and Mel loathe speaking Dutch. And then loathes, no, because they are plural. So here we, we say loathe. And then Dutch, what does it mean Dutch? Do you know? Hollandaise. So Dutch is Hollandaise. We don't quite like visiting foreign countries. We don't quite like visiting foreign countries. Foreign countries are countries that um, are overseas or foreign countries, different countries that you're living in. So right now I live in, in the USA. So a foreign country for me would be Brazil. But for you that live in Brazil, um, for you who lives in Brazil, 
a foreign country will be the United States of America or Canada or even Cuba. One thing I would like to point it out is the pronunciation of like. So if you say likey, it's wrong. Like. Lovey? No. Love. It's not love, it's love. So read with me. Repeat after me. Let's start here. I enjoy traveling. I like traveling by plane. So here I'm telling you how I like to travel using what transportation? Plane. I love Argentina. Argentinians are very friendly. Amanda adores watching the Brazilian team soccer games. They are huge fans of German songs. Let's start here now. Joshua hates traveling. Maria's mom dislikes packing. Her daughter is not a huge fan of the Cuban president. Adam and Mel loathe speaking Dutch. We don't quite like visiting foreign countries. And as you can see here, we have connected speech. So some people may speak like, I enjoy traveling. I like traveling by plane. They say every single syllable. They say every single consonant, every single sound. In English, we are going to connect words. We're going to connect sounds. So instead of saying, I enjoy traveling, I would say, I enjoy traveling. I like traveling by plane. It becomes a little bit faster, but not because I'm speaking faster. Is I'm simply connecting the words and the sounds. I love Argentina. So the, the verb love, it's um, the sound, the volume is a little bit lower. So I love Argentina. Argentinians are very friendly. Amanda adores watching the Brazilian team soccer games. So when you connect the words, when you connect the, the sounds, you actually ended up speaking faster. And then there are two ways of expressing how much you like something. You can use your verb in the into infinitive or you can use your verb with the ing. Some say that it doesn't really matter which one you use because they mean the same thing. I've read many resources and many papers talking about the difference between them two. And when I stop to think about it, I kind of agree with one of them. So to like and liking, you actually can use either one. It doesn't really matter, but there is a slight difference in meaning. When you use the into infinitive, if you say you, you like to cook, you like to bake, usually you're going to add a condition there. So for example, I like to cook um, on the weekends. What is my condition? That I like cooking only on the weekends. So cooking on the weekend became my condition. So for example, Shayla adores to play volleyball with her friends. But what if Shayla um, plays volleyball with her family? What if she plays volleyball with her family? Does she adore playing with her family? I don't know. Because the condition put here is that she loves playing. She adores to play with her friends. And playing with her friends becomes a condition. When you're being general about things that you like in general, the most common way of saying it is to using ing. So, Shayla adores playing volleyball. But you can also say that's when it becomes tricky and confusing. I can say Shayla adores playing volleyball with her friends. Shayla adores to play volleyball. You know, you can use whatever. But from experience in the USA, in American English, the most common way of saying it is using ing. So every time you're saying something that you like or dislike, the most common way is to use the ing form. So, Shayla adores playing volleyball is preferred um, to Shayla adores to play volleyball with her friends. Does that make any sense? Do you guys understand what I'm talking about? If you have any questions, you can leave in the comment, um, comment box. How do you make questions 
So how can you ask someone what they like to do? First of all, you gotta think in what tense you want to know the answer. You want to know the answer in the present, something that someone currently likes doing. You want to know in the past, like something that they used to like, but they don't like it anymore. Or in the future. So what tense? Because when you decide the tense you're going to use, the tense that you need the answer, that you want the answer, it's easier for you to figure it out um, the verb form and also which auxiliary verb you have to use. The second the second decision you have to make is this one. Which auxiliary verb will you need to form a phrase, to form a question? We have several auxiliary verbs. We have the verb to be, we have do and does, we have did and we have will. And it becomes less complicated if you already know the verb tense. So, for example, I want to ask something that you like in general, in life, right now, currently like. So, I'm going to use do or does. So, for example, do you enjoy singing English songs? Do you enjoy singing English songs? Here, we are going to start with the auxiliary, do. And why did I choose do? Because our pronoun is you, so do you, right? And why did I use the do or does instead of the verb to be? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Here we have a verb enjoy. Enjoy. Doesn't it sound weird if I say are you enjoy? It sounds weird. Are you enjoying? We don't say like that. Do you guys remember the video I posted today on my Instagram? I'm talking about action verbs and I'm talking about sense verbs. Sense verbs are those verbs that don't express an action itself. So, for example, the verb run. Run is an action verb because you actually use all of your body to run. You use your muscles, your members, your organs. When you enjoy, there is no action over there. Enjoy is a sense verb, therefore, we don't use in the ing form. It's wrong saying um, not enjoy because enjoy can be both. You can say enjoying. But for example, liking. Are you liking? Uh, are you liking the movie? We don't say like that. The best way of saying it, do you like, um, yeah, do you like this movie? Can you guys understand the difference between, between them two? Right? So I know that when I'm making some, I know that when I'm making questions, asking someone's, um, what someone likes to do or not, most of the times I'm going to use do or does. And then our verb, it's not in the ing form. Okay? Because when you're at, when you're expressing likelihood, the majority of the verbs are sense verbs. Therefore, no ing is acceptable. Because you don't use sense verbs in um, progressive tenses. Second example. Does Maria hate shopping? Does Maria hate shopping? Why did I use does in this case? First of all, we have the verb hate. And it's kind of odd saying hating. So we don't use sense verbs in the ing form. So does. Also, Maria, the... Respective pronoun for Maria is she. She does. So, does Maria hate shopping in the ing form? Because that's the most common way of saying. Here we have some more examples. Did Josh say he doesn't like to sue? Actually, so. No, I sue. So. Did Josh say he doesn't like to sew? What is so, Drielli? So is a verb of this. So this picture actually is describing so. It's costurar. So. Here I use the auxiliary verb in the past because, you know, maybe I'm confused. I thought that he liked to sew, but he doesn't like. But maybe in the past he used to like. So that's why I use the did. Will so, this indicates a future tense 
Will you enjoy a trip to Ireland? Of course. Pay me a trip to Ireland. So, for example, you are having a crappy day. You're, you're in a bad mood. You're all upset. You're mad with the world. You didn't have a good day at all. And then your husband looks at you or your mom or your boyfriend, whoever. And then he looks at you and say, will you enjoy a trip to Ireland? Of course I will, right? The third example, would you like to learn Japanese? Would you like to learn Japanese? Why did I use the, the, the model would? Sometimes when you're asking, um, you know, like, do you want to learn Japanese to be more polite and also to express um, uncertainty? I can use would. So, would you like to go to the mall? Would you like to go to Ireland? Would you like to, tr to travel to Japan? Would makes it more polite. Are you a huge fan of Canadian artists? Drielli, you said that we shouldn't use the verb to be. Well, I said that with verbs, you should not use the verb to be. Here, huge fan, it's not a verb. Huge fan is a compound noun. So, are you a huge fun fan of Canadian artists? And then the last example, does Liam mind British accent? And then we have a new term here for you to learn. Mind. I can say, I don't mind chocolate. What does that mean? Put in the comments down below, what do you think it means? Someone doesn't mind something. So if I say, I don't mind chocolate, what do you think I'm saying? As you type an answer, I'm going to hydrate my vocal cords. Any guesses? Andres, I said that it's almost like I don't care about chocolate. Not that I don't care, that's, that's not the meaning. Remember that I explained about the so-so? So when I say I don't mind, it's just like I don't have an opinion formed. I don't like, I don't just like, I don't mind. So if I say, you know, can I add broccoli to the recipe? I don't mind, I don't mind broccoli. Meaning that I don't like it, but I don't just like it. So it's not like I don't care. When we're talking about likelihood, I don't mind means that, um, yeah, you kind of like it, you kind of don't like it, you're in between. You cannot say, for example, I don't care about chocolate because care, it's about a person's action. So, for example, I don't care if you go out. I don't care if he lies to me. So, when we use I don't care, it's more about someone's action. When you say, I don't mind, chocolate is not about the action, but also, but instead the food. Was I clear? So I made you, I made you a question. How should you answer the question? How can you answer a question? Most of the times when I make a question, someone forgets to use the auxiliary verb. So let's learn once and for all. First, did Josh say he doesn't like to sew? What can the answer be? Yes, he did. And let's explore this answer a little bit further. Yes, okay. He did. 
He did what? He did say that he doesn't like to sew. So, did here, it's replacing say he doesn't like to sew. So, instead of saying yes, Josh said he doesn't like to sew, I can simply say yes, he did. Gerielli, can I say only yes? Yes, you can. But it doesn't sound very polite. It sounds sharp. It sounds rude. So, not to be rude, but also not to repeat all of it, you can simply say, yes, he did. Now, if he didn't, I, I can say, no, he didn't. Did, did Josh say he doesn't like to sew? No, he didn't. He didn't say that. Cool? Second example. Are you a huge fan of Canadian artists? So, here I use the verb to be. So, if I use the verb to be in the question, I'm going to use the verb to be in the answer. For example, would be accept acceptable saying, yes, um, he was, or he does, or he do. No. Because I used it in the question, I have to use it in the answer. Same thing happens with the second example. Are you a huge fan of Canadian artists? Yes, I am. No, I am not. One thing that I wanted to point it out that when your answer is negative, you don't contract. I mean, positive, you don't contract, but negative, you do contract. Cool. Can I go further? How to form negative sentences. Here we go. Whenever you're making a question or saying something that is negative, like that is, um, that has not, you need an auxiliary verb. Y you need it. Put in your mind, put in your head, put in your brain. You need it. So if you say, Shayla does, Shayla not like to sing in public, no, that is incorrect. You need the auxiliary verb. Sheila does not or doesn't like to sing in public. Sheila doesn't like singing in public. Number two, Mark and his mom won't like this present. Won't is the combination of will plus not. Won't. Mark and his mom won't like this present. I don't think Susan adores cooking. I don't think Susan adores cooking. Joshua's friends don't loathe playing hide and seek. <laughs> sick, no, seek. So Joshua's friends don't loathe playing hide and seek. Here, I'm saying that they like playing hide-and-seek. They like playing hide-and-seek. Hide-and-seek is esconde-esconde. So, every time you want to make a, sen a sentence negative, you need the auxiliary verb. Most of the times, and there are a few exceptions, but if you are a beginner, I would strongly suggest for you to use the auxiliary verb until you're comfortable enough to use the other options. So, if you're just starting, use the, the auxiliary verb, okay? So here I put some more negatives for you. So the combinations of the auxiliary verb plus not, right? So do plus not becomes don't, don't, does plus not becomes doesn't, doesn't, are plus not becomes aren't, aren't, is plus not becomes isn't, isn't. Will plus not becomes won't, won't. Would, would plus not becomes wouldn't, wouldn't. And then if you're going to say would, w, 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 would, would, wouldn't. Did plus not becomes didn't, didn't. Didn't, no, didn't. 
If you don't know which auxiliary to use, if you are confused, I advise you, I suggest you to start with the positive sentence. So if you start with the positive sentence, everything gets easier. So for example, the positive sentence, Shayla is crazy about Japanese desserts. I don't know why, Shayla, because Japanese desserts, that are not all that good. But I want to say that, well, she doesn't like, she doesn't like. Well, my, I used what? Verb to be. To make a negative sentence, I just add not. Shayla is not crazy about Japanese desserts. Or if I contract, I can say Shayla isn't crazy about Japanese desserts. So in English, we most we often um, contract words. Shayla isn't crazy about Japanese desserts. If I want to make a question, I just change, right? So the verb to be, my auxiliary verb, goes in front of my subject. Is Shayla crazy about Japanese desserts? One thing that I want to make sure here is that you're using your intonation. Don't speak like a robot. Use your intonation. And it's very important, especially talking about something that you like or don't like. For example, I like chocolate. Wow, you really sound like you like chocolate, huh? I like chocolate. No. How should you say then? <gasps> I like chocolate. I love chocolate. So give life to your words and sentences. Because in Portuguese, we don't use intonation. But in English, we do. See right now? We do. So repeat after me. Shayla is crazy about Japanese desserts. Shayla is not crazy about Japanese desserts. Shayla isn't crazy about Japanese desserts. Is Shayla crazy about Japanese desserts? Why it's so important to you? Second reason. In spoken English, not every time we do, we change the auxiliary verb with the subject. So in spoken English, you can say, Shayla is crazy about Japanese desserts. Shayla is crazy about Japanese desserts. In spoken English, you don't necessarily have to change the auxiliary verb for the subject. You don't, you, you don't necessarily have to swap them. But if you use your intonation, I'm letting the other person know that is a question. Now, if you're writing, texting, it's important for you to change it. Because in texting and writing, that's kind of hard to, to know because you don't, the words don't have intonation, if you know what I mean. Let's practice a little bit. So here I have a video. I'm going to play it for you. And then you have some questions here to answer. So take notes, take notes, and let's learn together. This is a short conversation. This is a short dialogue. What's up? Not much. Ugh, I hate this hot weather. No, right? It's so humid and I hate it. Yeah, it's like a hundred degrees. Yeah, normally I like to run, but it's too hot, even in the morning. Oh, I don't like running. I like to ride my bike, but it's so hot out by 9 a.m. I know. In this weather, I prefer to swim and enjoy cold drinks. Oh, yeah. I like <laughs> these popsicles and ice cream, too. Oh, my God, I love ice cream. Let's go get some after work. Yeah, let's do it. 5 p.m.? Great. See you at 5. So let's rewatch it and then take notes, okay? Let's rewatch it. Hey, what's up? Not much. Ugh, I hate this hot weather. No, right? It's so humid and I hate it. Yeah, it's like a hundred degrees. Yeah, normally I like to run, but it's too hot, even in the morning. Oh, I don't like running. I like to ride my bike, but it's so hot out by 9 a.m. I know. In this weather, I prefer to swim and enjoy cold drinks. Oh, yeah. I like <laughs> these popsicles and ice cream, too. Oh, my God, I love ice cream. Let's go get some after work. Yeah, let's do it. 5 p.m.? Great. See you at 5. Okay, so let's 
let's go for our questions. Uh, for some kind of reason. Here we go. Okay, let's go for our questions. False, true or false? True or false? The girl in blue loves hot weather. The girl in pink likes running. The girl in blue doesn't like running. The girl in blue hates riding her bike. Both girls are huge fans of ice cream. So you have to say true or false for each sentence. Write it down for me. So if you don't remember, the girl in blue is this one. The girl in pink is this one. So I'm going to give you some time to answer. I'm going to play some song. Okay, so let's go for the answers. So the girl in blue loves hot weather. It's false. Let's see what she says in the video. Hey, what's up? Not much. Uh, I hate this hot weather. So she says, I hate this hot weather. So it is false that she loves hot weather. It's rather, she hates it. The girl in pink likes running. The girl in pink likes running. No, right? It's so humid. It's yeah. true. Yeah, it's like 100 degrees. Yeah, normally I like to run. She said, normally I like to run. But here, you, you see that she used the to infinitive, to run, because she's going to say that she doesn't like to run in hot and humid weather. So the condition is that I like to run when it's nice outside. It's cold and windy, but when it's too hot, I don't enjoy as much. So see here, she used to run. She has a condition. But it's too hot. Even, Even in the morning, okay. The girl in blue doesn't like running, and it's true, she doesn't like running. In the morning. Oh, I don't like running. See here? You have the subtitles to help you. So she doesn't like running. Okay. The girl in blue hates riding her bike. It's false because she's going to say that she likes to ride her bike. Look. I like to ride my bike, but it's so hot out by 9 a.m. Here we go. The girl in blue hates riding her bike. It's false. Both girls are huge fans of ice cream, and that is true. The only thing I changed was the was the, the nouns. So instead of saying, oh, we love ice cream, we can say huge fans because it has the same meaning. So let's let's see. I know. In this weather, I prefer to swim and enjoy cold drinks. Oh, yeah. I like these popsicles and ice cream, too. God, I love ice cream. Let's go get some. See? So, oh, I like, I love ice cream. So huge fan. It's fine. So congratulations to you guys. And here I have some other exercises. So, so we can exercise and we can um, actively learn and practice what you learned today, what I taught you today. Let's brainstorm and think about this. Look at the picture. So look at the picture and tell me, where do you think the kids are from country-wise? 
So what country do you think they are from? And what they like to do? I'm gonna give you just a few minutes because I have a class right after this one and I can't be late. So where do you think the kids are from? And it doesn't have a right or wrong answer. And then you have to create a sentence saying, what do they like? What do they like to do? What do they like to, um, what do they like doing based on the picture? So one possible answer is the kids are from, let me see, China. <laughs> I don't know. The kids are from China. What do they like to do? The kids like to play soccer. See here, the kids like to play soccer. Next picture. What language do you think this man speaks? They are from Brazil and they like to play soccer. Good job, Andresa. Now the second. What language do you think this man speaks and what does he dislike to do? So I'm going to guess, right? So the man speaks Dutch or German. Uh, the man speaks German. What does he dislike to do? The man dislikes to sew. To sew. Because sew is costurar, remember? This man speaks English because he is handsome. <laughs> okay. And that's it. Questions? So just let's just recapitulate everything we saw today. You learned about countries and languages. You learned some new vocabulary such as soul, right? Or sometimes play. You learned how to make questions, how to ask other people what do they like doing. So for example, what do you, Drielli, like doing? You also learned that there are two ways of asking or expressing likelihood. You can say, I like doing, I like baking, or I like to bake. And there is a slight difference between those two ways of saying it. When you say with the two infinitive, you're giving a condition. Not every time, okay? In the ING form, it's common. It's more common than the two infinitive form. Also, you learned how to say um, what you don't like and what you do like and how to ask those things to another person. And that's it, guys. If you guys have any questions, I hope you learned. I hope that was very fun, this class to watch. I try to make a lot of questions. I try to make you interact with me. So, it be so the class becomes more dynamic. Also, you practice your listening. So not only you, you, you learned English, but you practiced your listening all together. I have to go because I have a class now to teach on my course, but I really enjoyed being here with you today. I really enjoyed spending time with you today teaching you English, and I hope you learned something new from me. Um, this class will be recorded and saved for an entire week. So if you want to rewatch it to learn more, to revise, you can watch it again. Sounds good? Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Good night.